Uh, Alright, welcome to a very big, very long, probably, DVD and Blu-ray update, which is um, gonna be the, the last really big update on my channel, update or unboxing, for a while, and I, I'm kinda gonna explain a little bit why, and I'm gonna get into a few things before I get started with this update. Uh, also, I'm just gonna mention right now that I will put the times down in the, uh, the, the, the description, there's gonna be a timetable of sorts, maybe that's not the right word, it doesn't matter, you know what I mean. Uh, about what titles I talk about and when I talk about them. So, if you're not interested in, wa in watching this whole thing, that's understandable. That way you can just kind of check the description for what titles I will be talking about and you can choose what you want to watch. If you intend to stay uh, through this whole video, you know, please do. And, and that, that way you don't really need to pay attention to the des description because you, you can just sit back, relax uh, and enjoy this video. Maybe you're gonna need to kind of get up and do some stretching in between. Maybe I'm gonna need to do that because I have a lot of stuff to get through. So I've not really planned how this video will work. It's just an update, but there's so much stuff to get through. I don't know how long it's gonna be. Obviously you know by now, I mean, you tell me. Uh, but I don't think it's possible to cover this much stuff unless you're Mr. Parker um, in less than... I don't know, it's just, it's just gonna be a long video. Some of these things I haven't seen, some of them I haven't, you know, I'm not really gonna be able to talk about too much. Some stuff I'm gonna wanna go a little bit more in depth about, but I'm gonna try to be as brief as possible, whatever that means. I mean, I kinda like to go, go on and on when it comes to some things, so it's gonna be a long video. There's no, no way around that, I think. Uh, just, I just kinda wanna mention a few general, um, just, just a general update before I was gonna do a separate video right here and then upload that and then this one as one video but I just thought you know whatever I'm just gonna mention a few things here if you don't want to listen to this you can you can just like I said you can check check the description when the actual update starts I, I'm, I'm not gonna be long I just want to mention a few things um, that's going on um, I made a, a general update before a life slash channel update where I talked about me moving which uh, unfortunately is not happening uh, some things just kind of didn't work out. No, I'm just kidding. It, it's happening, and I'm well on my way. Um, and um, I am, <laughs> I am, uh, I, I actually, you have about 18 boxes of movies right next to you, and that's going to be a whole separate video, which I don't know if people are going to want to watch. But I'm, I'm doing it anyway. Uh, I've been filming a lot of stuff. There's going to be. I, I said that in the video that there's going to be one vlog. I wasn't really sure. I hadn't really planned. Uh, planned it out, um, but I realize now that there is a lot of stuff I kind of want to cover. Why not just make a few videos? Um, if I'm gonna wait, make about one video for the whole movie, first of all, it's gonna be a very long video. Second, it's gonna take a while before the video will be uploaded. Uh, so I just thought I would make a moving out vlog and then upload that in a couple weeks, um, and then uh, maybe one week. I don't, we'll see, and then a moving in vlog or whatever. Uh, so I'm just gonna divide it because I have filmed some stuff and it's quite long already and I'm not done with the video. Uh, I've started editing and it's not uh, really done yet and I'm looking at 40 minutes or something. So I just thought that I will do a couple of different videos and um, you know what's coming up next. Well, I, I think I've said this before but why not just mention it again. Uh, movie nights, there's gonna be a lot more movie nights. Obviously in the beginning I'm gonna focus on the organizing of my collection. Uh, we'll be talking about how I'm going to um, be organizing it, uh, which, you know, I have, I have it planned out, but I've, I'm, I'm gonna be telling you about that later on, and I haven't worked, worked everything out. I mean, there's many things I need to kind of work out when it comes to just furnishing and stuff like that, and I will be taking you along with me, and I will be um, just trying to figure those, those things out. Uh, I have one week um, at the new apartment before going to Ikea, so I will be having some time to kind of measure the place and kind of decide how I want to furnish the place, how, how I want to have the bed and the couch and the, the shelves and stuff like that. But it's going to be a long process, I mean, um, with any move, obviously it is, but of course my channel is focused on movies, I have been vlogging a lot about my life in general too, so that's, you know, that's what I'm going to do as well. But um makes sense that I'm going to focus on the movie aspect, and that's what I've been doing kind of so far with the move also. But um, anyway, so I was just, just going to say also that uh, there was, there's of course going to be movie collection overviews, etc. Uh, 
but the organizing it's gonna take a while so I don't know when they're gonna be up exactly but eventually I well I have, I have big plans for my collection now where do we start with this stuff uh, I'm, I'm gonna show a few kind of nicer blu-ray editions and uh, then we'll get into some second-hand stuff I think and then we'll just we'll just see what happens it's just I mean it's, it's not that complicated but there's a lot a lot of stuff to go through so this stuff is gonna fall I'm just gonna grab a set here and then we'll see what happens first up the uh, the Shohei Imamura collection which uh, features uh, Stolen Desire, Nishi Ginza Station, Pigs and Battleship, Ships, uh, The Insect Woman, A Man Vanishes, Profound Desire of the Gods, Vengeance is Mine and The Ballad of Nariyama. And we have these spines here of the titles. And uh, yeah, a Masters of Cinema edition with all of these movies uh, by Shohei Imamura, Japanese, pretty legendary director. These have been released before. Uh, this is just a sort of collection with all of them. Um, without the book booklets, I think, and uh, well, without, I'm pretty sure the other ones came with booklets, but these, you know, they're just, uh, just have the discs, uh, and the cases are quite slim as well. So, but some of the other ones, they're out of print, and this one was supposedly, maybe it is out of print now, I haven't checked, but this was supposed to go out of print a while back, but then it didn't, uh, and I just thought, well, I'll just pick it up. Um, and I did. Okay, one more pretty nice box in here by Arrow. This is Kenji F Kenji Fukasaki's Battle Without Honor and Humanity, the complete collection by Arrow. Uh, I've seen the first one and they're not... I just, I felt like I needed to get this because I heard... Um, I just, what I heard about it, I felt like this is definitely movies that Takashi Miki must have been influenced by and sure enough he's actually on here uh, on the first disc talking about the series so he has been influenced by this and uh, I, I, I love his stuff so I thought I should get that um, I don't know I, I enjoyed the first movie but I <laughs> it's just a lot to take in a lot of story a lot of characters you need to really pay attention uh, to really understand every twist and turn in the in the plot, it's um, just a lot of names, a lot of name dropping, a lot of events, a lot of conspiring against people, a lot of clans or families. Anyway, it's just a lot of that stuff, and uh, some scenes are really cool, but it's not necessarily my cup of tea. But I think uh, you know I'll, I'll watch the rest eventually. Absolutely anything. This is uh, a Simon Pegg movie. Uh, well, it's it's uh, with Simon Pegg. It's directed by uh, Terry Jones. He's in this too, and the, the rest of the Monty Python members, except for Graham Chapman, quite obviously. Um, but yeah, it's just about Simon Pegg. He he's granted some, of whatever reason, he's granted these powers, and he can do whatever he wants. That's the basic plot, and uh, it was it was, you know, I kind of liked it. I, I do agree with someone saying in a review that it, it stuck too much to the script. It didn't leave enough room for improvisation, which I can see that. But I I enjoyed the movie for sure. Uh, we have The League Season 2, which, uh, as with the first season, I kind of was a bit hard to get into in the first half, and then the second half I really did get into it more. It's been years since I saw the first season, and it just took me took me this long to get Season 2. So maybe it's going to take me a while to get Season 3, or maybe... I mean, it's not really a favorite show of mine at all, so we'll see. Uh, then we have Danny Collins with Al Pacino, uh, Annette Bening, Jennifer Garner, Bobby Cannavale, Christopher Plummer, I thought Al Pacino was great in this. He plays this um, this um, vocalist who kind of um, he decides to change to change his life. He decides to you know contact his son that he's I think he's never met. Uh, he was played by Bobby Cannavale, great actor by the way. Uh, Christopher Plummer is so charismatic, and he's like in his mid 80s by now. It's, he's just a great great actor. So I kind of forgot about the whole secondhand store pickups. These are just. I'm just gonna kind of be randomly showing you this stuff. I'm not gonna specify where I got them or how much they cost or when I got them. Some of these are from, you know, secondhand stores, some are from Amazon, some from CD On, and it doesn't matter. There's too much stuff to really worry about that stuff. <laughs> Battlefield Earth with John Travolta. Terrific movie, absolute masterpiece. I mean, Blade Runner is an okay movie, but this, it, it's. It is really fun. 
there is some things in. I mean, I think it's a. I think the special effects are pretty good in some parts. Uh, there are there are things to enjoy which um, kind of work in a way, but most of it it completely doesn't work at all. Obviously, uh, I don't know how they intended for John Travolta's character to come off, but he is everything John Travolta says when he slaps people. It's just, I mean, it's comedy gold, and I don't think they intended that. I mean, obviously, it's one of these notorious uh, so bad it's good movies. I don't know. I kind of thought it had a few things going. But obviously it's not a very good movie. Then I picked up this, which I actually thought was the original, but I was just, I don't know, I just picked up the Steelbook of Evil Dead, which is indeed the, the remake, which I, I didn't realize that really. Um, I thought it was the original, but it's a cool Steelbook. It, it wasn't that expensive. I got this from CD on. I just thought, yeah, I kind of want to have a Evil Dead collection someday to have a bunch of different editions of Evil Dead. Evil Dead is one of those movie series that they have, there are just tons of different releases and you can really spend a lot of time, a lot of money uh, to collect, to, to build up a really cool Evil Dead collection. It's like with the, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it has tons of editions and these movies also, also does. Um, but this is the remake, which I wasn't a huge fan of, but it's still a cool steelbook. Then we have It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, season 10. Uh, this recently got renewed for two more seasons, which means that this will be going up until at least season 14. So season 11 and 12 uh, was released previously, and then they, I mean, announced, and then they announced season 13 and 14 on April 1st actually, so I wasn't sure if it was an April Fool's joke. I, will, I, don't, I don't know why it would be, it, was, it would have been a really random and uh, bad joke, like, alright? But anyway, no joke, um, season 13 and 14 are announced, so four more seasons to enjoy, that's great. Um, so I really do enjoy that show. Then we have The Intern with De Niro, uh, a movie by Nancy Myers, which I, I've enjoyed her movies, she did um, Something's Gotta Give, um, the Holiday, It's Complicated, um, yeah, I, I, I've enjoyed his movie, her movies. So this one I wanted to see and it's got the Nero, obviously I gotta I got see most things that the Nero does. So, uh, I enjoyed it, uh, I thought that it was, it, it took a while before it got going, but I did start liking the Nero, I thought he did a pretty good job and I thought that his and Anne Hathaway, Hathaway's um, relationship, I mean, th their chemistry, it, it, was, it was not bad, it was okay. Uh, and I did enjoy that, but uh, mainly I guess I just enjoyed the Nero. The Eight Diagram Pole Fighter, a um, Dragon Dynasty release, uh, Shaw Brothers movie. Um, I don't know, it's, by, it's with this guy who was in um, the the 36th Chamber of, Ch of Shaolin, and I think it might be by the same director as well. Um, I enjoyed this, uh, it's really, I, I do, I, I am annoyed with some, uh, some Some of the things in, in this movie bug me. It's a martial arts movie from uh, from Hong Kong, from the, uh, I think, early 80s. It is cheesy. Some things to me are a bit too cheesy, a bit too over the top maybe. Some acting is just ridiculous, and some of the, the dubbing, I, I, uh, this movie was dubbed, wasn't it? Maybe no. no hmm. Well, anyway, some some of the um, the acting was just a bit over the top, but it, it was uh, you know some sp pretty spectacular fight scenes in here. Um, it is pretty difficult to imagine how how one go about these um, choreography scenes. How how do you set them up? How do you film them? How do you preserve the continuity w from all the different angles with all these people fighting? I don't know how to do it. I uh, they're pretty skilled at that stuff. So. <laughs> I uh, haven't seen this one yet, still had a sticker on it uh, from a second-hand store. Flushed Away, just an animated movie, I don't know, yeah, DreamWorks, that I've been wanting to see for a little while, so... Um, also this one picked up recently, The Witches of Eastwick. Uh, this one I remember seeing a while back in a four-pack, and I found a standalone release of it now. Tapeheads, with Tim Robbins, John Cusack. I don't know much about it. Steel Magnolias, pretty good cast. Uh, who do we have here? Sally Field, Dolly Parton, Shirley MacLaine, Daryl Hannah, Julia Roberts. Also Tom Skerritt and Dylan McDermott. Uh, so I don't know too much about this, but it's some sort of character, piece, drama, kind of thing. This next movie is, um, 
I'm not sure what to think about it. It's it's the cobbler with Adam Sandler. It's it, it kind of reminds me of, of Click, which might not be a terrific movie either, but certainly much better than this. Or certainly better than this. Um, this kind of interesting. Uh, Tom, what's his name? Thomas McCarthy. He directed the Station Agent, terrific movie. He did Win Win, which is a good movie. He did something else that is pretty. I feel like he's a pretty respected director, and then he makes this, uh, which is. I can see why a lot of people uh, view that as a complete piece of garbage. Um, I thought that it was pretty enjoyable. Some things were straight out bad, I guess, but. I mean, I have a soft spot for Adam Sandler because I grew up watching his movies ever since I was at least 12. I've loved, you know, watching every new movie that he comes out with, whether it was, you know, in the beginning I probably rented them on VHS, maybe eventually on DVD. I don't think I rented many DVDs, though. I think I just rented VHS movies. Uh, and eventually I started buying his movies on VHS, then DVD. I've just spent a lot of time with Adam Sandler on my own and with friends, I mean, you know, watching his movies. Yeah, no, I haven't, I haven't spent with time with Adam Sandler himself. Obviously, you know what I mean, I've been watching his movies a lot growing up, and so, so you know, I just feel like I can't hate on Adam Sandler for, for making shitty movies. Um, I mean, whatever. He makes some um, bad choices in movies and he's not maybe the most gifted person in cinema history, <laughs> but... I like him. I like what he does. I, I, this movie wasn't great. I kind of enjoyed parts of it. Kind of zoned out for some parts. It, it was alright. It was the ending was a bit. I, I didn't really pay much attention to be honest at the end. But I enjoyed it. I mean, it was uh, it, it was our it was alright. We got a documentary called Nia Borjalen, which means the citizen, which is a Swedish obscure documentary about some uh, people who have experienced. Um, poverty and uh, alienation and uh, they go to a, um, a an EU meeting in Brussels to try to influence uh, certain things that they've perhaps experienced and uh, I haven't seen it yet but I found it at a secondhand store I wanted to pick that up this one I don't know why I bought this I don't even need to show it. it's called the Swedish gems of the century or what something like that it's a sports compilation. I don't know why I got this, because I don't really like sports. Now, we have two copies of Mildred Pierce with Kate Winslet. Why do I have two? Well, because I bought this a few months ago, and then when I came home, I realized that there was only one disc in it. Now, this has two discs in it, because um, recently I found this rental copy, which only has one disc in it, but this, when I found this, there were two discs in this, uh, so I just, I just got this rental copy. Well, basically, I, I put the two discs that were in here, in that set, and then this long disc right here was originally in that other set with the slipcover. So it does bother me a little bit that I have two rental di rental discs in that case, uh, but it doesn't say rental anywhere on them. It, I mean, they're, they're slightly different, but it doesn't bother me too much. Um, I, I at least have the show to watch, and I have seen the first two episodes. It's a... Um, I, I just can't, I, I just held, held on to this so that I could show you in this update. <laughs> but this is a mini-series. I've seen the first two episodes. It's about... I think it's... it's um, I'm not sure if it's based on a book. It might very well, very well be. But I know that, that there was a movie in the 40s. I think in the 40s, called Mildred Pierce. Essentially, I think it's the same plot, maybe some different variations. It's it's the same thing about a woman living in, I think it's 1931. Uh, her husband leaves her. She kind of, she doesn't really make a living, but she she has some extra work uh, making pies and stuff for, for some people that she sells. And uh, she eventually, when her husband leaves her, she needs to, you know, she needs to earn money. So she starts working at this uh, small diner and uh, eventually she starts sort of introducing the... Well, she starts kind of toy toying with the idea that she wants to open a restaurant of her own. With... Um, well, I haven't seen more than two, two episodes, so I haven't gotten that far. She actually hasn't opened the restaurant yet. Um, but uh, I'm kind of liking the show. Um, part of me wanted to, wanted to see it because I somehow sensed that it was going to be similar to Olive Kitteridge, which is a... 
this is by this is an, it's an HBO miniseries, and Olive Kitteridge was a miniseries that came after this, I believe, with Frances McDormand won a few Emmys or Golden Globes or both. I'm not sure, and um, one of the one of the best things I've seen. I mean, it, it, it's it's terrific. So I wanted to see another. I mean, it's another. You know, another HBO miniseries from recent years with a strong strong female lead, so I just thought that it could be a show that I might enjoy for similar reasons. And I was partially right. It's it's not as I mean I have obviously only seen two out of maybe six or eight episodes, I'm not sure how many there are here. Um but I feel like Olive Kitterich is more perhaps more artistic and existential than this, uh and certainly a lot better. Uh, even though I've only seen two episodes, I feel like I can somewhat safely say that I love all the, I like Olive Kitteridge a lot more. But this is a good show as well. Also, an, an, another similarity is that they both have the, the names. The, they have the, uh, you know, the, the titles are eponymous. They have the names of the main characters, which doesn't have to mean anything. But I, I just thought that, uh, yeah, there's not, that's, that's feels like another reason why I should get it. Uh, anyway, we got Bowfinger, Steve Martin, Eddie Murphy. Uh, Steve Martin, like Adam Sandler, some a, a comedian that I, I used to love watching his movies when I grew up. You know, uh, re I mostly watched his m modern stuff, which maybe hasn't been as as well, you know, as appreciated or whatever, as well received by critics and audiences alike. But you know, that's when I grew up, so that's the movies that I watched. And then later, I I got into his older, you know, 80s movies and, and stuff. This one is from the late 90s or early early 2000s. Uh, 99 and uh, I've only seen it once I think but I really I think I enjoyed it um, and I, I don't think I've seen it since I think it's been many many years since I saw it so I got that cheap on Amazon and I haven't had the time to uh, check it out yet uh, for the second time but um, I'm looking forward to do so um, I think I've seen all Steve Martin comedies right now I think there's a movie called Grand Canyon which is in which is some, some sort of ensemble piece drama, which is um, a pretty atypical Steve Martin movie, I think. But except for that, I don't know if there is any ma m you know, major Steve Martin roles that I haven't seen yet. So, you know, I've, I've really been enjoying his movies. I mean, any person who loves comedy loves Steve Martin. I just feel like if you love comedy... Speaking of Steve Martin, I bought these in the same order. order. Father of Bride. Part one, part two. Um, fun movies. I actually kind of enjoyed the second one more, which is, you know, sequels are never really uh, better than the original. You know, they're never as well received as the original. That seems to be a pattern. Uh, of course, there are exceptions. Uh, to me, this might not be an exception, but I, for some reason, enjoyed the, the second one a lot more. I don't think I've seen the second one, and if I have, it's it's been a very long time and I must not have seen it properly because I don't remember anything from it. There's like a, a brief scene that I kind of recognize, but I don't know if I really have seen that movie. The first one, on the other hand, I have seen a few times when I grew up, but it's been a long time, so I couldn't remember it too well. Uh, so I wanted to check it out again and I kind of liked it, but especially I really loved the second one. The second one has a scene where Steve Martin, he his daughter is about to, because the first one is about, you know, his daughter getting married and he has to deal with that, and the second one is about his daughter and his, her husband, um, you know, they're gonna have a baby. So, and there's a scene towards the end, I guess, where they're gonna leave for the hospital and he has taken a, um, I'm not sure if it was a sleeping pill or just some sort of um, something to calm him down, but it was pretty strong stuff, and he just passes out immediately, and then they have to go into the hospital, and he's kind of out out of it on on their way to the hospital. And there's this scene at a traffic light that just had me. I mean, you know, one of those scenes. If you, maybe if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. If not, it doesn't really matter what what happens. It's just the fact that I mean, when when you watch comedies, and you literally need to pause the movie because you're laughing so much. That's just great. It doesn't happen too often with me. It, I don't even know how I, it doesn't... It's not even every few months that it happens. And that happened while watching Father of the Bride Part 2. Yeah, I I just... it just cracked me up. It was... some some stuff 
it doesn't really necessarily need to be a good movie or a good comedy. Some things can, can really crack you up anyway. I do think it's a good comedy though, I don't really... I, 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 yeah. I don't need to defend myself, I, I, like, I like that movie. There has been rumors of a third movie, which I don't know if that's really necessary. Steve Martin doesn't feel like doing that and I can understand why. Uh, but I, I would love to see that. Uh, this one is still sealed, I haven't checked it out yet. Uh, she's funny that way. Uh, main reason why I bought this is because of Jennifer, Jennifer Aniston, but this has a pretty good cast. And it's by um, Peter, Bog Peter Bogdanovich. He made... Um, I think I've only seen one movie that he made. Uh, the Last Picture Show with Jeff, Br Jeff Bridges, which is an outstanding movie. Um, he also made a movie called Paper Moon around that same New Hollywood era in early 70s which is supposed to be really great as well, but I haven't seen that yet. Uh, another Blu-ray that I picked up in the same order from uh, CD on, still sealed, is uh, Ida, which was uh, Oscar nominated, I believe for... My, maybe for cinematography, but at least for best for foreign picture. I'm pretty sure that it did not win anything, but... Um, yeah, Polish black and white movie, really been wanting to see this, and this is by, this was an import, which for some reason they, they decided to, um, you know, well, it, it was 50% off, so, I, and then I had a coupon, and I, I, I got a good deal, so. Uh, a Band Called Death, released by Draft House Films. Um, this is, a, I haven't seen this yet, but it's a documentary about a punk band called uh, Death, so not the, um, fantastic death metal band, the pioneering death metal musicians, but a, an earlier punk band, and I don't think they ever got the recognition that they may have deserved, but this is a documentary just about the band and about their career, and um, I'm, I've been very interested in that for um, quite a while now, and I just, I, I didn't pick it up until now, obviously, but I've, I've had it in the back of my mind for a while. Oh, and we're back. Well, I'm back. You're you're still here. I just mean that I had to switch the battery pack. It, it you know, battery ran out. Grabbed a glass of water, took a quick break, and now we're back. You might have noticed the angle kind of changing somewhat. Uh, I was talking about this when I got cut off, so I'll just uh, start over. I am so awfully sorry about that. Bride of Reanimator. Uh, by Arrow. If you love Arrow, if, if you collect Arrow stuff, if you're a horror fan, obviously you have this already. Um, so I don't need to say much about this. But um, I, I like. I, I, I do have a lot to say about it actually. But I'm gonna try to just keep it quick, keep it, keep it, keep it brief. Um, Reanimator, a classic horror movie. Obviously, this one it's definitely a worthy sequel. It doesn't live up to the first one necessarily. But it's, uh, it's a good sequel. It reminds me just as much of Society and From Beyond um, as it does remind me of Reanimator. Which makes sense because, I mean, partly this movie ends with uh, Screaming Mad, jo Mad George's special effects. Society ended with his special, e special effects. Um, and uh, From Beyond has the same kind... well somewhat similar effects in From Beyond, and uh, so I think maybe effect-wise, maybe that's the main reason why I'm reminded of those two movies as much as Reanimator, but it is a, it is a sequel to, to the original uh, story. Um, some things were rushed, I, I love the fact that Brian Usna, he doesn't really hide those things, he's very honest about his work, I mean he's not a, an A-list Hollywood director, so he, do, he doesn't need to be hiding things, I guess, if, if you know what I mean, but I love that some things in the in the commentary I didn't listen to that much, but I listened to some things. And there's an interview with Brian Usna, the director of the movie, and he says that kind of says that some things didn't really work out the way he planned or the way he wanted them to. Some things could have been better. Some things could have been improved. He kind of insinuated that they didn't have enough time to work on the movie, and I thought that the movie ended very abruptly. You know, when the movie ended, I, I definitely wanted to see more, and I don't think that was necessarily a conscious choice to end it like... I mean, you know, I just I think they they they, they ran out of uh, resources and, and time. 
um, because they, 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 they do discuss that a little bit. Um, uh, Screaming Mad George talks about that, that when it was time to shoot his stuff, his special effects, his wonderful, bizarre creations, you know, in the end, they had to kind of like cram them all together in one shot uh, because they just didn't have enough time and maybe that's why it felt like the movie ended so abruptly and so suddenly because they just they had they had to wrap, wrap up shooting and maybe they couldn't completely fix that in editing I don't know not, now I'm just speculating but I, I I did think that the um, the ending was a bit abrupt and I don't know um, uh, so like I said a good sequel but f kind of forgettable but it looks great on Blu-ray um, and uh, yeah a good set for sure. Uh, we got another Billy Connolly live DVD. Was it something I said? Uh, pretty good title to, for for a stand-up show, I guess. Um, Billy Connolly, I like his stuff. Uh, not much to say. He's a good comedian. I, I, I still feel like he was maybe a bit better as a stand-up comedian in like the the old days because I think that he, the way he tells his stories in the old days in like the early eighties. Maybe maybe are more to my liking, liking. But um, I mean, he's 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 a lot more energetic in in you know. Uh, I think I, I I haven't seen all of his stand up, but I feel like as he evolved as a stand up comedian, he got definitely got a lot angrier and more upset. And maybe maybe that's just his. I think he, I mean I've I've seen some some uh, travel shows with Billy Connolly, so I'm sure it's it's for the most part just his um, sort of a stage persona that he's kind of adapted. He's screaming a lot, swearing a lot, and he didn't do that back in the old days. And I just think that sometimes it's a bit too much. I don't think that he needs to be that loud as he is the whole time. I, I think he uh, he's funnier when he keeps it down a bit. I mean, when he's um, telling stories in a slightly subtler way, perhaps. He still does some of that. He still tells stories in a great way, obviously. He's, he's great at that. He's a master of telling stories. and coming back to stories and uh, really creating vivid pictures in the uh, listener's head. Long Way Round uh, with uh, Eva Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman. I've seen uh, two uh, travel shows with Charlie Borman, which he did after this, which they were called By Any Means. Really enjoyed them. I knew that he had done some um, travel stuff with Ewan McGregor. Uh, this is pretty much the, the ultimate road movie. It's not a movie, it's a show. It's um, this is the, the special edition too, so I think this is may, maybe has a couple more episodes than the, the you know broadcasted version or whatever. But um, they go through uh, Europe. And they, they don't really go in depth too much. I mean, they, they go pretty. They, they pass Europe pretty quickly. I mean, the, in the editing, they have kind of cut out a lot of stuff in Europe. They kind of I feel like they want to get to the Middle East and especially Siberia as quickly as possible. You know, that's the, the part of the world where they seem to have dedicated most of the, the time in, in the show, if you know what I mean. Um, and that, you know, it's really interesting. It's, it's like the ultimate road movie, buddy road movie comedy, in a way. It's, I mean, it's not really a comedy. It's obviously a documentary, but it just works like a road movie. It, it's just so enjoyable. <sighs> we have a lot of stuff to go. Uh, Django Kill, if you live, shoot. But it just says Django Kill on the spine, so I don't know if, if the title really includes If You Live Shoot. But yeah, a pretty uh, violent, I uh, haven't seen it yet, it's still sealed, but a pretty violent um, Italian uh, 60s uh, western exploitation that I'm looking forward to. Modern Family Season 6. I don't have Season 5 yet, but that was cheap, so I just got it for now. And then I could have shown this after uh, Django Kills, would have been more appropriate, but this is a a uh, double feature uh, from Mill Creek with The Grand Duel and the reason why I bought this, Kioma with Franco Nero. Um, so yeah, I wanna see um, Kioma especially. And then I got this from a seller on um, online Swedish seller, The Ben Stiller Show. I uh, haven't seen this yet, but it has, uh, you know, Janine Gruffalo and Andy Dick. I'm not a big fan of Andy Dick, but uh, Janine Gruffalo, she was great in... Um, the Larry Sanders show, which I recently enjoyed a lot. Uh, Tombstone, I have this actually, but uh, when I was gonna watch this a couple of years ago, the, the picture quality just just was not doing it for me. It was just, it was a bit, I, I couldn't enjoy the movie. And um, it was really kind of compressed or whatever. It was just, you know, the black borders on the sides, they took up most of the screen. I, or maybe it was on top and bottom, I don't know. I think so, actually. Uh, but it, I just I, I just couldn't enjoy that movie, so I 
I had to turn it off and wait to get a better edition. And I think this might be a better edition. Um, I think it has uh, yeah, two discs, the director's cut. So I haven't seen that yet, but um, I picked up season two of a Swedish show called Rena Roma Rolf. Not much to say. The Pledge, Jack Nicholson. Uh, I wanted to see this uh, right now because I recently watched uh, The Crossing Guard, which is also with Jack Nicholson and also directed by Sean Penn. This is a Sean Penn movie. This one I've heard really good things about, so I can't wait to check that out. I just haven't had a lot of time lately with the mood and what have you. Um, this next purchase I am not very ha satisfied with. I partly regret it. Uh, I'm gonna tell you why. It's um, seasons 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. No, almost. 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 of The Simpsons. And these are the Simpsons head, head cases, obviously. The reason why I'm not satisfied with this is because I'll show you a clip of this. The seller sent this in a fucking plastic bag. No protection other than a plastic bag. And this is a seller who has sold a lot of stuff online. He had a good grade, a good rating, whatever, from other customers. And he, he ships fragile, rather fragile, plastic boxes in a plastic bag. So luckily they're not too damaged. Um, but they, they have some small cracks and stuff which I think is due to that. I mean you don't do that, you don't sense anything in a plastic bag. You don't know how the postal service is gonna handle um, the package. You, I, mean, you, you, I mean you need to protect. It just pisses me off because there's not much you can do about it. I mean, I mean, obviously there's a risk involved in buying used stuff from private sellers, and you don't know how they're gonna, you know, treat the the package, whatever. Um, and this time, I mean, I was both lucky and unlucky because nothing really bad happened to the, the items. But actually, the main reason why I'm not going to keep these is because I didn't realize this. You can see on the bottom, these can't stand like this. They they will fall over. And I intended to display these, that's why I got these. I already have these on DVD, but I have the regular editions. And I want to have all the head editions so that I can display them. Can I put them like, you know, like so, whatever, on, on a shelf and have them all and display them. I, I, I still need to get a few. So that's what I want to do, that's why I got these. Um, but you, you can't stand these, I mean you can't uh, put these like that. Because they have that freaking plastic thing on the bottom. Uh, and normally these would have a uh, transparent plastic uh, slipcase like that, I guess, so that so that you could in fact put them uh, up vertically like that. I think so. Anyway, if if you have these releases, maybe you could uh, let me know if you can in fact position them vertically like that uh, without any aid from anything around. Anyway, so I'm not going to be keeping these. However, I think I can sell them and get some some of my money back. Uh, also, this came with a game which I can get some money for, I think, which is The Simpsons Hit and Run for GameCube, which apparently has gone for some money online, so... Uh, also, it came with these, which is part of why this was a, 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 a you know, a big bundle of Simpsons stuff, so I just, uh, I was the highest bidder. It also came with some uh, plushies, and I don't know why, but there's two Homers, and two Barts, and they're, they're the exact same. Uh, one Lisa. One thought that I had might be, I mean, obviously these have, I mean, these days you can buy blind blind boxes of stuff, so, but I, I don't think you can buy blind boxes of plushies. I don't know, but I don't think so. Another thought that I had was that maybe these have been in some kind of claw machine, and someone has just received two of Homer and two of Bart. I don't know, maybe. And I contacted the seller about, about, you know, I, I basically wrote that Hey, I just picked up the package, just to let you know, it might not be a great idea to send fragile plastic boxes in a plastic bag. So I wasn't being rude about it, but I just let him know that, you know, maybe think about that for the future, because nobody's gonna want to receive stuff like that. No response. I uh, also picked up season 12 on a regular release, because if I'm gonna have all of the, uh, the heads, I kind of want to have, well... Cause, I mean, okay, so I have season, which one is this, 12, I think I have 11, 12 and 13 or something like that, maybe 14 as well. 
uh, in the head cases and if I'm gonna have those displayed like that I kind of want to have uh, I kind of want to have them um, in the regular editions as well so that I can have them all in, in on, on both it's a big waste of money I know but and I'm not gonna be able to uh, complete the collection anytime soon either because now I gotta you know hold on to my money a bit more we got Barbershop and Barbershop 2 back in business. The first, I've, I've seen these before, but um, I remember turn, turning the second one off because I didn't enjoy it. And I actually turned it off this time too. I just think it's a dreadfully boring movie, the second one. It didn't really need to be made. Um, the first one is pretty good though. Um, I think one of the reasons why I don't, I don't enjoy the second one as much um, is because it doesn't have Anthony Anderson in it, and I love the scenes. Uh, that's probably my favorite part, actually, of the with the first movie. In the first movie, those scenes with Anthony Anderson kind of lugging around that big um, uh, the cash. Um, I don't know what you call them, but there's no money in it, and he doesn't know that. Um, but he just he just keeps lugging it around, and there there's some funny scenes. I think Anthony Anderson is a great uh, comedian. I've enjoyed. Uh, some of the stuff that he's been in for some years now. Uh, and he's not in the second one, so maybe that's part of the reason. But also, I just think that... Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I just think it's a really boring sequel. I could probably elaborate on that, but I'm not gonna. Um, there is a third one coming out now, too, so... Um, I think I wanna... I mean, I kind of wanted to see that now. W when I got them, I was thinking, so I'll watch these, and then the third one comes out. That's, you know, good timing, but now after realizing that I still don't like the second one, I'm not sure if I'm really that excited for the third one. But um, City by the Sea with De Niro and Francis McDormand. It was pretty good. I enjoyed that. Um, series 2 of Two Greedy Italians. I talked about this recently. If you want to hear me talk about that, I can find the, uh, the link to the video. And um, basically, my thoughts about season one goes for season two, so I don't need to repeat myself. So just let me know if, if you want to hear me talk about that. Probably no one will let me know that they want to hear me talk about that, but just in case you do, I will uh, provide you with um, the link and whatever. This one was pretty good. A uh, Swedish movie, actually. A Swedish drama called... Well, the, the English title is My Skinny Sister, which is not exactly what the title means, um, but... Um, so kind of, it doesn't really matter. If you're Swedish, I think you know why I'm not gonna get into the title, because I don't know if it's spelled wrong or if it's... Anyway, it doesn't matter. This is about a 10-year-old um, girl um, realizing that her 15-year-old uh, older sister, 17, 18, 9, I don't know, has anorexia. And... Um, it's mainly about that. You see, for the most part, you see everything kind of through her eyes, her innocent eyes. And it, it also delves into anorexia. I don't know if the director has, um, you know, personal experiences. Maybe maybe her sister had anorexia as, as she was growing up. It would make sense because they're, they're treating the subject with a lot, a lot of respect. I mean, obviously, I mean, if they didn't, then it would be pretty lousy. But uh, I just feel like they, they treat the subject of anorexia. I'm not going to pretend that I'm an expert, obviously. Um, but I, they do that with a lot of respect. And I think, I'm just going to briefly mention, there was a girl at the school that I went to now, um, when I had to get my grades, my high school grades, whatever. And she talked about, she made a presentation about her experiences with anorexia, anorexia, and she talked pretty, a really brave thing to do. She talked pretty extensively about it, and how after a while, you know, she, I mean, basically she was lucky to be alive because, um, you know, eventually she would only eat half an apple and a glass of water every day and she would puke into these bags and she would sm snuggle, smuggle the bags out of the house and it just made me, made me realize, listening to her talking for probably a good almost half an hour, that yeah, obviously, I, I understand that anorexia is not something that people do because they want to be skinny. I mean, it's a subject you gotta deal with some delicacy. But it made me realize the grave, the gravity, the grave, whatever of, of of having anorexia. And like I said, I can't I can't say that I understand exactly how a person feels when they just can't get themselves to put food in their mouth. 
but I think having listened to her talk about that, I kind of thought back on her presentation as I watched the movie. So I feel kind of thankful to that girl for that because it made me kind of understand maybe some things better or sympathize better. Uh, because as I watched this movie, there's a certain scene where the older sister, played by a, a Swedish artist called Amy Diamond, which I did not know that she was going to be in this, but there's a scene where she just refuses to eat. A uh, really, somehow really visceral scene. She just, her parents just tries to get her to eat something, and she won't, and she won't tell them why. And there, it just made me. It made me think about it in a different way. I think even after having listened to her presentation. Now, as I watch this movie, it made me think about it in a different way, partly thinking back of her presentation and partly just because of the power of that scene. Anyway, it, it was a good movie. I think that, I gotta say, Amy Diamond, uh, well, that's not her name, that's her artist's name, but Amy Desismont. De I'm very sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. I perhaps think that she wasn't, she did some overacting. Uh, the girl, though, the uh, the main character, you know, the younger girl, she was terrific. She had a really natural way of uh, acting, which I've made me think that she wasn't really acting. She um, made me think that the, the director did her job. I don't know, maybe you should just kind of not have kids acting in movies. You should just kind of let them be themselves and you should have them improvise. Uh, I think that that usually turns out better and I think that's what they did here. Either that or this 10 year old, 12 year old girl is an incredible actress. How long is this video now? 40? 50? Jesus. We got The Vanishing, a Dutch movie. A uh, pretty rare release, I think, a Swedish release of this movie. This is out on Criterion and um, I, I think I'm, pre I'm pretty satisfied with this DVD actually. But um, yeah, it's um, a very notorious uh, Dutch movie which has an ending that people have talked about a lot. And I kind of I knew that the ending was coming, so I guess that was, I, I should have, um, I mean, I, I had been spoiled, spoiled uh, the ending. But that's, I don't think, I don't know how much difference it would have made, because I feel like the ending was a little bit um, predictable, but I, I mean, I, I did know about it before, so maybe it's not, maybe I can't say that because I didn't know what was gonna happen. I just felt like it wasn't. Uh, uh, it didn't strike me as as shocking as I kind of was expecting. I expected to be really disturbed by this movie, and I wasn't. And the main thing I, I love the movie, but the the reason why is because the the direction is so natural, uh, and the way it jumps a little bit back and forth in time and makes you understand only towards the end exactly what's going on and who. The killer is and what what he's doing. I guess that that was really effective and just it doesn't. Uh, it's not a flashy movie. Whatever. I mean, it, it it it's a really realistic movie. It deals with uh, it, it just creates uh, scenes in a very uh, natural way. Um, great acting too. I don't, I can't really put my finger on exactly. I'm trying to find out exactly what what I loved about it. But it just I, I guess just the the. the the direction and the way the scenes developed and evolved and the way they let the scenes uh, evolve. I mean, some of the scenes, they go on for a little while and the actors, they do a great job. It, it, it's just everything coming together and for, for a great movie. I mean, it is terrifying, don't get me wrong, but that's not why I loved it. Um, the Lady in the Van, Maggie Smith, uh, Alex Jennings. This was pretty good. Uh, I love the... Um, the production design when it comes to the actual van it's based on, on a real story and they they tried to they they went apparently went through a lot of work to find the actual m ver model or whatever of, of that van and um it looks really i just love the way the the the, the yellow color of the of the van pops out in, in the frame in, in the picture and um yeah that was actually the main part i liked about it maggie smith is great but the van was <laughs> the star of the movie to me, which is kind of, it, it makes sense, but I, I guess, um, you know, no disrespect to Maggie Smith, she was a great, I just, I just really loved looking at the van itself, actually, which is kind of a weird thing, but I don't know, anyway. Man, this comedy show, Broad City season one, once in a while I see a comedy show which kind of reinvents itself, I mean, not itself, but it reinvents comedy, it does something new with comedy. 
and uh, this is one of those shows. These two uh, creators of the show, Abby and Ilana, I don't know their last names, but they, they're, they're on the cover there. They're, you know, obviously, they're, they're, they are the show. They're, they're just so great. I mean, I don't know exactly how much of the writing they're, they've, they've done, but, I mean, they've created the show and they're in the show, they're the main characters. They're so talented, they're, they're, and the chemistry is fantastic. And I was thinking about that as I started watching this show, that man, I mean, it's only been a couple minutes and I'm already, you know, I already feel pulled into the show. The chemistry is just there from the beginning. And I found out later why that was, and that's because it's based on a web series. So the chemistry was already developed from there, so that made sense, and that's probably probably for the better because it um, it doesn't you know it doesn't need to convince you that it's good. It's just great from the beginning, and the first scene it, it's just, it just presents you with a um, it's just pr it, it presents the nature of the show with the first scene so well, and then everything that that comes later. Some things are not shocking, but you kind of expect them to come because you 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 quickly learn the comedy, the language of the show, and uh, I'm not saying that everything is predictable, but you you're just in the world of these two these two uh, 25 ish year old girls living in New York, um, dealing with life in a very funny way. I don't know. You you're just in that world, and you. Great show. It's it's absolutely great. I can't wait for season two, and I'm so happy that it's got. I think it was renewed for several seasons. I think, according to IMDb, there's like six seasons coming, all in all, which is great. I just had to switch out the battery pack again, and then this current battery hadn't completely charged. Charged. So I had to sit around watching a YouTube video for 10 minutes or whatever and just waiting a little bit longer for this to charge as much as possible. I, don't, I only have 10 titles left-ish, so I think it should be enough. If not, well that reminds me, I should probably charge the other one while I wait, just in case. I mean, not while I wait, but while I shoot this video, while I keep going with this video, because uh, you never know. Okay, I just wasted more time. Okay, like before, I was talking about this when I got cut off. Underground by Amir, Amir Costa Rica. This is released by BFI um, on Blu-ray, obviously. Uh, this was, I think this is the first time we see this on Blu-ray. Uh, I have the DVD, the Artificial Eye release, and um, I've seen uh, the movie and I, re I really like it, so I wanted to get it on Blu-ray. Uh, what I'll do probably is watching the movie on Blu-ray in the future, I don't know when. Uh, this, was, this was limited, so I did not want to risk this going out of print. Um, what I'll do, I'll watch the Blu-ray, and then on here we, are, we also have the the, the six-part TV version, which is called Once Upon a Time There Was a Country, which is about six hours long, DVD quality on that one. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll probably watch the Blu-ray and then wait a little while, then watch the TV version. This is when I w was cut off. I, I remember saying this and then the camera like, bye-bye. <laughs> then the TV version and compare it to the to the the actual movie and see see how they differ because it's been too long now uh, since I saw it for me to really compare them in a fair way so I think I'm gonna I mean I wanna see it on Blu-ray anyway so uh, but anyway okay uh, first wives club um, the longest day. This is a pretty epic movie, I think, epic war movie from 1962. One of these ensemble pieces, I think, um, from, um, I don't know, I guess still the classical, classic era, or the old, old system, but pretty late into that system, um, when it was starting to fall apart. Uh, the Last Action Hero, I've not seen that, I uh, found uh, House 3. Which is a either either a Danish or a Norwegian release. I'm sorry, I don't know which. Um, but the first two I have on Swedish releases, and the Swedish titles they're completely different from from the uh, the original. But apparently on this this Danish or Norwegian release, they have decided to well they've stuck with the ori original title. Uh, but it will bother me to have one and two uh, and.
and then you know the third one in a different title as opposed to <laughs> but it will bother me to have the third one in a different title than the than the first two on, on the on the shelf so if i do come across the first one uh, or the third one in a swedish release i will get it i've just been talking too long now <clears throat> a few more to go once were warriors uh, an australian or new zealand movie I'm very New Zealand um, that I had on VHS, but I never watched it, so I don't know. I uh, haven't seen that yet either. So uh, a documentary called The Unknown Marx Brothers. Uh, there's been a few documentaries like this. There was one about Peter Sellers, which I definitely want to see as well. Uh, one about Jonathan Winters, um, but this one I I uh, am the most interested in. Uh, also, uh, sort of the icing on the cake. Uh, this is uh, narrated by. Leslie Nielsen, which, um, you know, I mean, I love Leslie Nielsen because of the Naked Gun and stuff. This is obviously, I mean, I'm pretty sure this is just going to be, you know, a pretty straightforward narration. I mean, this is not something you would watch because you like Leslie Nielsen. It just happens to be narrated by Leslie Nielsen. I don't know why, but I guess, I don't know. Uh, but that's definitely a plus, which was kind of cool. But, uh, yeah, I, I probably know some of that stuff already because I've read couple books by the Marx Brothers. I've watched obviously most of their movies and so I think maybe I'll recognize a lot of that stuff but uh, yeah a documentary that I wanted to get for sure. Tomorrowland. Uh, I remember when this came out I was kind of interested in this. I debated maybe I want to see this in the movie theater. I never did. Then I didn't hear terribly great things about this. Um, but uh, there we go. Um, we got a double feature with Jackie Chan, released by Shout Factory. Um, pretty good uh, double bill here. Uh, Crime Story and The Protector. Uh, they're pretty similar to each other because they're they're not action comedies. Uh, not a lot of mar martial arts in them either. I mean, there's some, maybe more in Crime Story, but they're more straight straightforward uh, action action movies to me. And definitely no comedy in them. Uh, the Protector is his first American movie. Which uh, it was, it was pretty good. I mean, it was enjoyable. I had a headache while I watched it, so you know, sometimes you cannot take that out on the movie, or at least on the movie experience. Uh, if you remember watching a movie while you wasn't feeling great, then maybe you won't have great memories from the movie, even though it's a good movie. Uh, but the Protector, it was not one of the strongest, strongest uh, Jackie Chan movies. Uh, Crime Story, however, maybe not one of the absolute best because it was so extremely over the top in some scenes. It was just explosions upon explosions. It was just, okay, enough with the explosions. I don't need more explosions now. Um, but um, th there, there were some... Some of those scenes, they're absolutely crazy. I don't know how they do that stuff. I mean, they just do mo action movies in a very... They, they do them in a very special way in Hong Kong and there's, there's just nothing like it. So, uh, yeah, that was some... Some really great scenes, but ultimately, just because it was so much, it ended up being maybe a bit forgettable. Um, some some Jackie Chan, Chan movies, they focus on action scenes. I mean, some of the um, the focus of the action scenes, they're more, spe more specific when it comes to uh, set pieces and stuff like that. It's, it's not as much, so it's not as much to take in, so you will remember the movies and the fight sequences um, better because they just have something about them that stands out. This movie doesn't necessarily have anything like that that makes the action sequences, sequences stand out. They're just overall absolutely nuts. And I like that, but um, there, are, there are better Jackie Chan movies, I think. But it, it's up there, maybe top 10 or something. Okay, this is a good, good one to end with. I did not uh, plan on ending with this one, but this is a very special movie because it's... Uh, an existential punch in the fucking stomach. It, it is. It, it doesn't look like much on the cover, but that is kind of the point in a way. This just. I mean, you gotta watch it. I mean, it. It's such a beautiful day, by Don Hertzfeld. I could go on and on about this. Um, I'm not gonna talk too much about it. But it is one of the best best movies I've seen, I think. Um, 
it might have gone under the radar because uh, he well he was nominated for an Oscar for World of Tomorrow, which is on here as well, along with a few different uh, older shorts. Uh, it did not win, um, but uh, World World of Tomorrow I'm gonna have to give that another chance because I didn't really get into that film to be honest. But especially the main feature, it's such a beautiful day, just one hour long. Um, it's it just it's one of those mo I mean one of those movies it's it's the movie the uh, one of the very very few movies and probably at the top spot that I have felt yes when I when I watched it I just felt anxious out of my mind I wasn't sure if I could watch this I I didn't don't didn't know if I could keep watching it and I don't know if everybody will feel that way someone left a comment on Facebook like. I couldn't really enjoy this movie because it just made me sick. And then someone responded, "Yeah, I could see how that how the movie would have that effect on you, because it is ex it's very visceral. I don't, I don't even know how how much I should say about it here because I want to say so much, but I I don't think this is the place for that because it's already such a long video and and." I, I feel like I should um, make a separate video about this uh, movie. Let me just say that I felt horrible when I watched it, and when I say that, I I I, I mean horror. I, that's a, I don't know if it's a good thing. It is a masterpiece, an absolute masterpiece, but it's not a movie that I enjoyed watching because it just deals with mortality and eternity in a way which just really gets to you. At least it got to me. And it is terrifying. <laughs> uh, it's uh, stick figures um, in different clouds on screen. You have different things going on at the same time. And he borrows, if you know Stan Brakhage's work, uh, I think he is influenced by Stan Brakhage, I think so, because a lot of stuff are kind of abstract and extremely expressive stuff, and I don't know. That, that definitely contributes to the visceral nature of the movie. It's, it, I mean, it feels like somebody is repeatedly punching me in the gut and punching me in the mind. <laughs> I don't know how I should describe it. Uh, I think the next time I watch it, I will watch it during the day. Because... Uh, to, be, to be honest with you, some of the stuff just really freaks me out, and I, like I said, I don't know. Don't be afraid to watch it because I say this. Um, maybe if you've been thinking about, it, maybe if you have been freaked out by these kind of subjects before, you know, death and uh, and existence. May, may I don't know. I mean, I'm guessing maybe you will react like I did because I'm a human being. I'm not that different from many other human beings, so it makes sense for other human beings to react the way I did because we're all human beings. But I, I think a lot of people will not necessarily be as affected in the same way as I was. I just, anyway, I mean, I don't know what to say. Um, I just feel like I can't say enough and that I can't really explain it in a very satisfying way to myself. But, um, yeah. I, I mean, it's... Um, it's a masterpiece all around in so many ways. It, 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 I, I'm not. I'm not exaggerating. It's. Um, if you haven't seen it, I just think you really need to see it. That's. Uh, yeah, that's a good way to leave this video off. Not. Not on a downbeat note. I just need to. Really uh, be clear about how exactly, how powerful this movie is. Because I mean, I, and, and yeah. Anyway, okay, that's that. I'm just gonna wrap it up. Detta kommer ta lång tid att redigera, fy fan.